Hi, this is Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us today for Live with Annie. As usual, we've started the stream a bit early. This helps us get everything set up and broadcasting properly to our various platforms. You can find a countdown clock on the screen showing how long it will be until we actually go live. While you wait, please connect with us and other viewers in the chat. Let us know where you are from and whether you're a new or longtime viewer. We'll see you live soon. again for joining us for Live with Annie. We are so happy to have you with us today. While you wait for the program to start, we hope you'll enjoy the content playing on screen. There's so much inspiration, so take a moment to tell us what you love in the chat. Don't forget there is a countdown clock on the screen so you know how long until we go live.
Hi, it's Annie again reminding you that we'll be going live with this week's episode shortly. There is a countdown clock on the screen showing how much time is left. You've got just enough time to grab some water or a beverage of your choice and a snack and to connect with us in the chat. We'd love to hear what you've been working on this week. It's Annie, back to remind you that we'll be starting this week's live very shortly. We've got a really fun episode planned for today, and we'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 28 of season 3 of Live with Annie. Today we are continuing our episodes on using patchwork in your By Annie projects. We'll be joined today by TJ Wright of TJ Wright Designs. TJ is a dynamic and multi-talented art quilt pattern writer and designer with an unwavering passion for textiles. She finds inspiration in large-scale prints and fabric panels, weaving them into stunning quilt patterns that captivate the eye. You are sure to love the Biani bag that TJ has made using her techniques. If you enjoy these episodes, please take a minute to follow us wherever you are watching us. And if you know someone else who you think might enjoy the information that we share, we would love it if you'd tell them about Live with Annie too. The easiest way to do that is to just tag them while you're watching. That will take them directly to the episode so they can watch it too. Also, we love reading your comments, so please be sure to interact with us throughout this presentation. Tell us what you think about what we're showing, share your tips and tricks, and tell us what projects you are working on. 
We want to know what you think, and we love learning from you, too. Be sure to add any questions you might have in the comments or chat, and we will do our best to answer them before we close. Last week, we started our series of ideas and inspiration for using Patchwork in your Biani projects. We showed lots of ideas from all of you for creative ways to use PC in, in everything from pockets to borders to entire bags, including linings. We also shared some fun bags that we made and shared tips for how to calculate the size of squares and put things together. If you missed it or want to watch it again, Remember that you can find all the previous 128 episodes of Live with Annie on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or at byannie.com. And we'll put up all the links to make them easy for you to find. Also, we added a post to our Byannie blog a couple of days ago that includes all the pertinent information as well as photos about our um, presentation last week on the A Place for Everything that I customized using a disappearing nine patch. So if you want to see that information in written form, be sure and check out that blog. And we can't wait to see what you do too with the disappearing nine patch on your projects. So be sure to share photos of your projects and enter our monthly photo contest. All right, I'm gonna have a quick drink before we get started on today. So today we are going to continue exploring the subject of using patchwork in Biani bags, but we're going to go off in a little bit of a different direction into the modern art quilt world. While I was in Chicago for the H&H &H America show this summer, I met lots of wonderful people, including three new designers. I met the first of these designers, Meg, when she came into the booth to talk about collaborating. Meg said that she had designed a quilt pattern that had some leftover pieces, and her customers had asked if she had ideas for how to use them. She said she thought they'd be perfect for a bag, but she wasn't really interested in writing patterns for bags. So she thought she'd find someone who did write bag patterns, and since she loved making by any bag, she headed our way. Well, I thought that was really serendipitous, as I had been thinking about these episodes on incorporating patchwork for several months actually, and I knew I wasn't going to have time to make a lot of models. So while Meg and I were discussing patterns that might work for her project, two of her friends, TJ and Susan, who were also new designers, stopped by to visit. So again, TJ is an art quilter. Susan focuses on wearables. So each of these people had their own unique style and process, and I thought it would be really fun to see how each of them incorporates their style into Biani bags. So I challenged each of them to make a Biani bag or more using their techniques and then join us on Live with Annie to tell us more. Meeting these three ladies was really a highlight of my trip to Chicago and I can't wait for you to meet each, meet each of them today and in the next two weeks. So again, joining us today is TJ Wright as we said, she is a dynamic and multi-talented art quilt pattern writer and designer. Um, she uses large scale prints, she uses fabric panels, and her quilts really captivate the eye. Her ability to seamlessly combine all those different art forms really makes her stand out from the crowd and captures imaginations wherever she goes. I know you are going to love seeing TJ's work, so please help me welcome TJ Wright. Hi, Annie. Hello. Thank you so much it's for joining separate. us. I understand you've got some roof, roof work going on at your house this week. I do, and I, I asked my husband, can you ask them to go to lunch now so I can do my live with Annie? And so for right now, it's quiet, and I'm hoping that we'll make it through. <laughs> we'll be prepared. If all of a sudden we hear pounding, we'll know why. It is such yeah. a treat to have you here, and I really thank you for making time uh, to join us. Before we dive into all the art quilt stuff, I would love it, love to learn a little bit more about you. So can you tell us just a little bit about your family and where you live? So I live in a small town outside of Eugene, Oregon, called Cheshire, and it is actually known as part of the wine country, wine region of Oregon. I live here with my husband and two dogs. And when I'm not in my studio creating, I work as a full-time hairdresser. 
and have a wonderful clientele of over 30 years. And I specialize in as a master hair colorist. So that's what I do when I'm not in my studio creating. And um, yeah, it's a great life in Oregon. Have you ever been to Oregon? I actually have. My husband and I actually um, owned property near Roseburg for a while, a little area called Ooh. Myrtle Creek. And I really have yeah. fond memories of the time we spent there. I had a beautiful garden. Um, the nights were cool. The days were warm. I made a, a quilt while I was there. It was just a really idyllic time. I can see why you love living there. Um, I know I saw that you had an art exhibit at one of the local wineries earlier this year. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So um, the, it's five minutes from my house. It, they um, they specialize in Pinot and, uh, they have a beautiful tasting room and allow me to exhibit my art and put it there on consignment for sale. So, um, gives me an outlet and a place to display my work, whether it be large scale, uh, quilts, uh, art quilts or smaller pieces of threadscapes, which I've been working in a smaller scale um, because some people don't want a large art quilt in their house. So um, trying to capture more of an audience. That's awesome. And what a wonderful um, ability to be able to collaborate with somebody like that and have an outlet for yourself, especially so close to your house. Sometimes that's hard yeah. when you're a local artist, you know, getting a place to display your work. So is that where I saw some beautiful quilts that you had made that you incorporated wood and rocks and shells into them? Was that part of that exhibit too? Yes. And they're still up in that, in their location currently. Yes. Okay. So we've got a few yeah, pictures of us. Can you tell yes. us a little bit about how you make those as far as your stitching, how you incorporate the nature pieces into that, um, what your process is for what threads you use, what needles you use, are there particular stitches that you use when you do that, and how do you um, add nature to a, a piece like that? I'd love to hear some, some background on how that all comes together. So I started out with a, a foundation of an art quilt and it is just layers of fabric. I actually don't even do any piecing. I just lay it down on batting with a backing and then use layers of mesh to create depth. And you can see some of the mesh coming up around the shells and rocks. And then uh, I will free motion quilt it and I usually do an organic style don't really have a plan just trying to create more texture in the background and start layering and laying out the pieces the natural pieces um, generally I'll use I have my preferences as far as threads I love Valdani threads and um, use them primarily in my pieces and a lot of these uh, pieces in nature that I attach are given to me by people. I actually have purchased very few of these uh, rocks and sticks. People bring them to me. They're fascinated with um, this whole style of art quilting. It actually has a name. It's a biophilic. It, what it is is bringing elements of nature into your life. And um, this is a really great way of doing that. Uh, they fit in large homes, small homes. I think these pieces would be perfect for people who live in tiny houses or more compressed housing where they can actually have nature in their environment. What a great idea. And uh, those are fabulous. It's really interesting because every time I go on a trip, I you know, pick up a special rock or, you know, a special piece of wood, you know, as we're hiking and stuff. And I have on my dining room table a long kind of boat shaped metal thing that has a candle in the middle. And then it's just surrounded by all these little pieces. And 
I love looking at them and that my grandkids, when they come over, you know, they'll pull out the sand dollars mm -hmm. and we'll remember that trip that we took. But being able to incorporate it into a quilt would be a really way to gift that somebody, to somebody who went on that trip with you so that they've got a way to remember it too. I really, really love that idea. So thank you for sharing that. Thank and you. before we go on, I just wanted to mention when you talked about Valdani threads, you had mentioned to me the other day that coming home from H and H, you feel like you've been drinking from a fire hose because mm -hmm. of every all the collaborations and things that have happened. Did did you meet Valdani? You met them before H and H, but you did a presentation for them at that show, right? I actually didn't do a presentation for them at H and H, but I will be doing a presentation actually were scheduled possibly for two in the schoolhouse. So at, at market. market, at full market. So if there are any people watching this that are going to be going to fall market, look for uh, this biophilic threat trend, trend using Valdani threads. I'll be representing them there uh, and sharing this. That's great. Well, I really enjoyed looking at your website, um, the the quilts, the beautiful art quilts you've made, the patterns you've made. I had just assumed that art quilting was a full-time endeavor for you. So learning that you are a master hair colorist and have a full-time business with that um, was really exciting to hear. And I'm guessing that the attention to detail and the artistic detail that in, is involved in quilting really applies to that world too. So I'm curious which came first. Um, did you start with the the quilting or did you start with the hair color and that moved you into quilting or was there any kind of tie in with it? Um, I've been a hairdresser for over 30 years, but I've also been a creator and a uh, textile artist my whole life. Really. I had stone sewn my whole life. Um, started out predominantly as a garment sewer, but there's only so many pieces of clothing that you need. And so then I got into quilting and I loved all the beautiful fabrics and all the things that you could do. And it's just been an evolution since then. And now it's kind of an obsession. I have more ideas than I have time and um, looking forward to diving deeper and going through my notes and, and uh, the inspiration that I have jotted down to explore some more ideas in the future for sure. But, um, you know, I would say that as I move through my career, I am looking forward to um, doing quilting more. I, I always say, be careful what you wish for, because I started um, writing patterns as a way to pay for my quilting habit. And now I rarely, if ever, get to make a quilt. But um, but yeah, it's wonderful. Like I, I visited with a store yesterday and she asked me, you know, what do you do when you're not doing by any stuff? And I said, well, I have Friday night sleepovers with my grandson and on Saturday mornings we usually do, you know, a craft project or a sewing project, but that's really it. Other than that, it's by Annie. But fortunately, I love everything that I do with that. So it's, you know, it's what I'd be doing if I wasn't doing this. So, you know, hopefully you yeah. can get to that point too, because it really is wonderful when what you love is what you get to do all the time. So I really loved looking at the quilts on your, um, website, the ones that you have for sale, City Canyons, Moab Flute, Pixel Moods, all of those really caught my eye. As you said earlier with the philo biophilic pieces, I can see any of those hanging in a modern home or an office. Um, I don't know if we have any pictures, but if not, people go sure, be sure to go check out TJ's website and look at those because they really are beautiful. I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about your process of making those and whether they're made using traditional piecing techniques or something much more complicated. They look very complicated. Generally, I, um, so I love half square triangles. So um, generally that's my go-to. Uh, I've had a lot of success in creating uh, stunning pieces that I really resonate for me personally. And so half square triangles are kind of where I jump off at. However, I have been playing with uh, 
half square rectangles. And I use those in my um, panels for this a place for everything bag that I created and and then adding some other shapes. So it this uh, Moab flute quilt that you're looking here has those half square tri uh, rectangles in it. And that's really where I started playing around with that. And I'm really looking forward to exploring um, those shapes in my designs in the future. Those are great. Well, your your eye for color is really fabulous. And it looks like the fabrics that you pick to make those quilts is part of what makes them so incredible. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what you look for when you shop for fabrics and how much do you usually buy and do you use a huge variety of fabrics in a quilt or is it usually just a, a handful? Um, sometimes I'll work through a whole collection. The Moab flute quilt has a lot of fabrics from Northcott in it. Uh, the Biani bag that I created, A Place for Everything, this is uh, Northcott fabric as well. I think the collection was called Journeys, and I made several pieces out of uh, that collection, and that was what inspired me to use this because I still had bits and pieces left over from other projects that I had created. Um, I, I'm excited to tell you that I have um, two quilts that are in Hoffman Fabrics lookbook for the fall market. So I'm really excited about that. That's my first time being featured in a lookbook. That's really special. That's awesome. And I'm sure they appreciate it too, because your style um, is so different from what you normally see. And it will really, um, really show off their fabrics beautifully. So thank you for doing that. I have to say that art quilting is fairly new to me. It's something that I've always been interested in, but not really something that I've done a lot. And I'm wondering if you have any tips for somebody who would like to try these, branch out into these more modern designs about, you know, how to get started and, and make time and, and make it work. Well, um, give yourself permission to fail. It's okay if it doesn't turn out, it's just fabric, you know? So um, a lot of my best pieces come when I just allow myself to explore different shapes and colors, color combinations, layering textures, try new things. You may see inspiration in somebody else's work and see how it might resonate in your own work. So don't be afraid to fail because when you're when you're exploring your creativity, you're learning, and that's the most important part. So I always say, just give yourself permission to fail and go for it. That is such good advice. And, and really, that applies to, to so many things, bag making too. You know, you're not gonna do a perfect binding the first time you try, um, but no mm -hmm. one but you is gonna notice it. And so keep at right. it, keep practicing. And, and above all, I think to have fun. Don't make it stressful, don't yeah. make it that you don't enjoy it. Cause if you look forward to it, you're gonna be a whole lot more excited about it. So <clears throat> I want to next um, have you tell us a little bit about that beautiful A Place for Everything bag that you made. I um, understand, so when we met in Chicago, you were wearing a, a beautiful jacket that you had made using pieces that were cut up from one of your art quilts. And so as we talked, I said, it could be really fun to see um, how you do that. And I understand that's kind of what you did on your bag. So I'm just gonna turn this over to you to, to explain kind of how you made the bag and what you learned. And, and if I think of questions to ask that you don't cover, I'll, I'll, I'll pipe in. Okay. So initially my plan was to use one of my art quilts to create this bag. However, I wanted to try the soft and stable uh, in, uh, interfacing that Annie uses in her bags. I had never used it before and I wanted to try it. So what I decided to do is I had uh, leftover um, bits and pieces 
uh, from other uh, quilts. And so I decided that I would um, just kind of fuss them together. I, I'll turn my, I'm going to turn my camera around here. If you just give me a second and uh, show you. We'll give her a minute to get that turned around. And uh, sh we've got, she's got, I think, a little bit of a process and the screen goes black. So you're going to look at me while you wait for her. But um, we've got lots of, lots of stuff to talk about this. So there you go. We'll, we'll turn it back to you. Yeah. Okay. So you can see here that I have the um, half square rectangle. And I really loved working with these. But then I thought, well, why don't I add a, half, a quarter circle to it? So I started adding these quarter circles. Can you see that here? And yes. um, that, that created some really, really fun shapes. So um, I would cut out of another one and then piece it into this. And it just created so much dimension. And when you lay these out, if it doesn't fit, the one thing that uh, I was shooting for was what um, the panel size was that I was going for. And so I had that in mind when I was laying them out. And so you can see how they don't always line up perfectly, but that's when these other scraps come into play. And then you can just add uh, bits and pieces in between and piece it together until you get to the dimension that you need for whatever panel you're creating on your back. So that's how I did that. I did make my panels a little bit larger than what the pattern called for because I did some very intense um, quilting. I don't know if you can see. I uh, did a lot of organic quilting on this, and so it caused the piece to shrink up a little bit. So in order to stay in the dimensions that the pattern called for, I went ahead and made it about an inch bigger than what was called for in the pattern, just to give me leeway. And um, that worked out really great. I did do a practice piece because here again, I hadn't worked with the soft and stable before. So I made one of the peacekeeper bags. And with this one, it didn't shrink up as much because I didn't do as intense of um, quilting on it. But this was a really great way for me to practice that fold over um, binding. And I have to say, oops, I have to say, if you don't have one of these, you need to get one. This, the, what do you call this, Annie? It's called By Annie's Stiletto and Pressing Tool. And I agree. I this, can't sew without that in my hand. So this, it, it is different than any other stiletto because it has like this um, diamond type. The tip is called texture. sand ground. We actually send those tips yes. to a needle making factory to process for us. So they've got that little bit of roughness, but they are not so rough that they're going to catch on anything and snag it. Yeah, I mean, that is genius, I have to say. I, I, I have lots of stilettos, but I have to say this is my go-to now. And then, of course, that it has the ability for you to do some pressing uh, with the end of it. And it just looks so charming, and I love it. So kudos for you for creating this little tool. Who knew we needed it? But we do. And it was perfect for doing this fold over binding. I can say mine is not perfect, but I figure if you can't see it from a galloping horse, it's perfect enough. So I decided that I would go with that. So that's beautiful. It turned out great. Thank you. So do you want to see the inside of my um, peacekeeper bag? 
Yes, and I want to hear how you used it. Did you do some piecing on the inside pieces as well? And hang on, before you go further, what did you do on the side strip? Is that just one piece of fabric or is that pieced as well? Um, it is a one piece. One piece, okay. One piece, well, it, yeah. It's got so much texture and interest going on that it blends perfectly with the piecing that you did yeah. on the pockets. And each side of the bag is different. This this side is totally different than this side with the zipper. Uh huh. And I have to say, um, I'm sure a lot of people are uh, aware of the quality of the finishings that you have for your bags, but they are amazing. So smooth and very high quality the zippers were high quality all the buckles and findings for this bag i it, it was wonderful to work with these products so i am That's a huge great. fan oh thank you thank so you, you so much see, you yeah we want to see the inside okay so you have to remember that i'm a stitcher too and so i wanted a bag for all of my valdani threads oh that's great so i I took a little bit of creative license with the um, making the pockets and I did a little gusset in them so uh -huh. that it, the balls of uh, thread didn't get smashed. That's a and good idea. So I did six across and I just added an inch to the vinyl okay. and then just did a little fold in it. And, and you did that on the great. sides, not the bottom and top of them, the sides of the, of each one. Yeah. That's a um, good idea. Because I knew that, it, you know, it was, they were going to be going in. Zippers and stuff. It would have been hard to do it on the yeah. other side. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the other side, so these were, are more pieced. Uh -huh. I happen to have those, so. This is a great place to put your booklet, um, your scissors. You could also put the pieces that you're stitching in there. So um, I did two of these. I did them identical. And um, this one has the elasticized mesh. Uh -huh. And that that elastic is beautiful. I don't know if any if the viewers have used this elasticized um, fold over. It fold is, over elastic, yeah. We call for that I in quite to, a few I, of our patterns, but yeah, it really. I had never heard of it until a few years ago, and boy, once we discovered that, we've used it in lots of patterns because it's so simple and easy. One one step to bind an edge, and we even use it on fabric sometimes or even on vinyl like we did in that one, just because it's so quick and easy. Yeah. And then um, learning how to use zippers uh, and attach the uh, zipper pulls, like your tutorial on your website about that was a game changer for me. I don't know if people go to, I hope that people visit your website and look at those tutorials because there is a wealth of knowledge there, I have to say. And so again, the fold over elastic on the mesh and another zipper. And the way that Annie shows you how to do these zippers, you can make them any size that you need you can change the color of the pull if you want a more exciting color or, or whatever. Um, I just learned so much. I, I feel like I am a better seamstress doing this project. It is definitely a skill builder and I can't wait to do another one. They're kind of addicting. <laughs> I agree. I think you need to make an I'll drink to that next to for um, your bottles of wine since you have a winery five oh, minutes away. Yeah. 
For that sure. would be that would be a fabulous bag made with your technique too. So that yeah. really turned out well. I just loved seeing that. I loved hearing about um, how you made it, how you made the fabric. I had kind of it, when we talked, I thought you had a whole big piece quilted already that you were going to cut up, but you actually made the pieces for the individual parts of the bag. So just one thing to mention for people that want to do that is just look at the pattern and what it tells you you need for the pieces that are cut from the quilted fabric. Take those sizes, add an inch to the width, at least an inch to the height and width, depending on how big they are. Sometimes if they're a great big piece, we'll add two inches. So you can account for shrinkage and any wonkiness that happens and, and then you're good to go. So. Um, I think that looks like lots of fun, something that I could have fun tackling with too. And what a great way to use leftovers from other projects, even just fabrics from your stash. So thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. all your knowledge on that. Um, before we say thank goodbye, um, let's see if anybody has questions. It looks like there are at least one question here. Oh, and the question was, and this was the same question I had, is what do you use to make the quarter circles and when you sew them in, did you just lay them on top and sew around them? Or did you actually piece those in? And if so, how do you do that? I used a template and I just cut out the, um, you know, you can get the acrylic templates that you can cut around. Uh -huh. And we've, um, we've got those. I just cut around and pieced it in just like you would any quarter circle. But I just love the way that it added dimension in the um, rectangle or half square rectangle, they call it. But yeah, I used I used a template. All right. All right. Well, well, before I say goodbye, is there anything else that you can tell us or that you want to talk about that we missed talking about today? Um, I just want to thank you. It was such a pleasure meeting you and you're so inspiring and I look forward to learning more from you in the future because you have so much knowledge to share and thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Well, you're welcome. We really enjoyed seeing what you've done. I look forward to following you even more on social media, seeing what you're up to. I hope we'll meet. I will. We will meet in Houston. Um, I. Good luck on that schoolhouse. You're going to knock them dead, I know. And then I assume oh. we'll probably see you again at H&H &H next June. So take care, keep in touch, yeah. and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing all TJ's quilts and techniques as much as I did. That was really fun um, to see how she does it and to see how kind of free of a process it is, you know, not having to cut specific sizes, you know, sew specific seams, just get out there and play and have fun. So um, be sure and check out her, her information at her website. Um, she does have her patterns available as PDF downloads through her website. Um, for Biani patterns, such as the A Place for Everything and the supplies that you need to make that, please start by visiting your local quilt shop. Those shops are such an important part of all of our sewing and quilting communities and is, is, is up to all of us to keep them strong and vibrant. So if they don't have these products, they can certainly get them either from us or from their favorite distributor. And we're always happy to set up wholesale accounts with qualified stores. So just ask them to contact us for more information. All right, we are going to move on now to our featured local quilt shop of the week after I have a drink of water. So if you've watched very many Live with Annie's, you know that at By Annie, we are all about supporting local quilt shops. One of our favorite events each year is our local quilt shop contest, which we celebrate in February. And during that contest, we encourage you to vote for your favorite local quilt shop and tell us what makes them so special. And then to continue the fun and support of local businesses throughout the year, each week we highlight a store or two or more during Live with Annie. So today we are going to visit two shops, both of whom have by Annie trunk shows on display. We are going to start in Sulphur, Louisiana at Flowers to Fabric, who is the regional winner for Louisiana in this year's LQS contest. Owner Tanya LeBlanc Moak tells us, I was introduced to sewing as a young child. My mom was always sewing something 
and I have many fond memories of playing in the sewing room. My first quilt was for my cat. I used a panel and hand stitched around the blocks. It took me forever. <laughs> I'm sure it felt like forever too. Mom and I took a quilt class in 2003 and I have been hooked ever since. I have completed over 225 quilts and counting. Wow, that is a lot. I currently teach ninth grade full time and have my shop open on Saturdays. I also make appointments after school. While in college, I worked part time in a flower shop. After I finished college, I taught Brenda, my boss at the flower shop, to quilt. And in 2007, we started Flowers to Fabric, selling fabric online and doing craft shows. In 2019, Brenda retired and wasn't interested in opening a shop, so she gave her part of the business to me. So on September 28th, 2019, my Flowers to Fabric opened. We have over a thousand bolts of fabric with something for every quilter. Located in downtown Sulphur, Louisiana, we are the only shop in our area. We have a large selection of Biani patterns and notions, plus fabrics from lots of companies, including Moda, Free Spirit, Riley Blake, and more. We also offer classes, machine quilting, and custom quilts. When asked about upcoming events, Tanya told us, customers can request a class and we are happy to plan it for them. They can also get their friends together for a private class. Classes are listed online and we always have something fun going on. Beginning quilting classes, jelly roll projects, and biani classes are just a few of the fun things coming up. And at the end of September, we will be celebrating our fourth birthday. Customers who voted for Flowers to Fabric in this year's LQS contest praise the store's owner and selection, as well as, the, well as the sense of community that Tanya has developed in the store. Terry says, it feels like being at home with friends every time I walk in the door. You are always greeted with a smile. And LaDonna wrote, Tanya is the best. She's fast, friendly, and always happy and helpful. And she carries a nice selection of fabric and other notions and items. And Christy shared, Tanya does a great job providing a variety of quality fabrics, notions, and classes. This is more than a quilt shop. It is a community of women who support each other, learn from each other, laugh together, and love each other. When asked about the impact of the LQS contest on the store, Tanya shared, since we were selected as the regional winner for Louisiana, we have had more traffic on our website. Our customers are the best and they have been happy to celebrate with us. So again, Flowers to Fabrics will have their by Annie trunk show on display in the store from September 16th to October 14th. So be sure to stop in and check it out and wish them happy fourth anniversary from all of us at byannie.com. All right, next we are going to travel to Concord, New Hampshire to visit Paradise Quilting and Gift Studio. Store owner Francine Rules says, I started making quilts at age 45 and did a lot of t-shirt quilts. I discovered I wanted to make the quilts from start to finish, so I traded a motorcycle for my first long arm as my husband and I owned a motorcycle shop. I thought that was a great story. My husband signed me up for a quilt class at Mr. Quilts in Concord, New Hampshire. I met lots of wonderful friends and learned a lot. A number of years later, when the store owner became ill, I bought that quilt shop and we've been operating it for six years. We seem to be growing every day and are still in Concord, but are now in our second location. We have an annex that enables us to have bigger classes and we also do comment sold events here. We have about 4,000 bolts of cotton fabrics, and as people walk into the door, we say, welcome to paradise. We help people with color choices or picking a pattern and try to help with whatever their needs are. We also have a big bag selection with lots of Biani supplies, and we carry Burnett sewing machines, and we service and restore featherweights. That's awesome. Customers who voted for Paradise Quilting were especially vocal about the wonderful customer service and atmosphere in the store. Kathy said, everyone is welcoming and helpful without being pushy. The classes are very helpful and the patrons are all very kind as well. When you walk in that door, it's like coming home. 
When I needed a quilt long-armed for my son's wedding, Fran sat down with me in her book of patterns. She listened and heard what I wanted and found the perfect long arm pattern for my quilt. This individual attention to her customers make Paradise a special place to learn and grow. I have always felt welcome and included, and Fran is all about taking five minutes to teach a new technique or give suggestions and options. I just love visiting the shop. And Susan wrote, it's a home away from home and has everything that you need. If they don't have it, they will try to get it for you. They have a great classroom space and plenty of classes available. It's kind of like Cheers, but without the booze. <laughs> I thought that was cute too. Paradise Quilting will be celebrating in the New England Shop Hop in September and participating, did I say celebrating? Participating in the New England Shop Hop in September and October. And they are also taking part in a local spooktacular Shop Hop from October 26th to the 29th and they will have their Biani trunk show on display through the months of September and October. So be sure to stop in and check that out and tell them Annie sent you. All right, thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back at 2 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time next Wednesday with another inspiring episode of Live with Annie. We're going to continue to explore the subject of using patchwork in your Biani bags and we'll be joined by Megan Dollinger of So Simply Meg Quilts. Meg is going to share ideas for including offcuts from other projects in a bag and you are sure to pick up some great tips so be sure to join us next week. And until then, happy stitching! <laughs>